Au fond de la Seine, il y a de l'or, des bateaux rouillés, des bijoux, des armes. Au fond de la Seine, il y a des morts. Au fond de la Seine, il y a des larmes. Au fond de la Seine, il y a des fleurs, de vase et de boue. Elles sont nourries. Au fond de la Seine, il y a des cœurs qui souffriront trop pour vivre. La vie et puis des cailloux et des bêtes grises, l'âme des égouts soufflant des poisons, les anneaux jetés par des incomprises, les pieds qu'une hélice a coupé d'outrant. Les fruits maudits des ventres stériles Les blancs avortés que nul n'aima Les vomissements dans la grande ville Au fond de la Seine, il y a cela Au Seine, Clément au vent des cadavres, au lit dans les draps, sans fée de limon, fleuve des déchets, sans fanal ni havre, chanteuse berçant la morgue et les ponts, accueille les pauvres. Accueille la femme, accueille l'ivrogne, accueille le fou, mêle leur sanglot au bruit de tes larmes et porte le cœur, et porte le cœur, et porte le cœur parmi les cailloux. Il y a de l'or, des bateaux rouillés, des bijoux, des armes. Au fond de la Seine, il y a des morts. Au fond de la Seine, il y a des larmes. It's so intense anyway, this show. Can't have me crying as well. And I'm not. Shh. Calm down. It's jolly nice, isn't it, to be out of England? <laughs> I think we're so happy to be here. It's true, isn't it? Paul didn't like the food. <laughs> I never know what to say to that. Oh well. Um, so, Kurt Weill left Europe forever and went to live in New York with Lenya where I th I'm sure they, they were very happy. They got a nice 
brownstone apartment on the west side. And he wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And you can imagine Lotte Lenya stamping up and down the stairs and carrying on as one does. And Kurt Weill taking no notice at all, as that's what men do, you see. <laughs> but they loved each other very much. Paul just gave me this beautiful book, actually, called Speak Low, of their letters to each other. And it was, it's really, as marriages go, it wasn't bad. <laughs> <coughs> and then, we're talking about 1942 now. Brecht came to the States as well. It was getting a bit too much. And I think he had some idea, which I find incredibly funny, of writing scripts for Hollywood. <laughs> I don't think he wrote any, did he? No. <laughs> no, Senator McCarthy got him. Um, but it's, it's a great concept, isn't it? Bertolt Brecht goes to Hollywood. <laughs> Poor old thing. We mustn't laugh at him. Um, so Kurt Weill, very excited, you know, there was his old friend and collaborator in America. So he gets, he got on a plane, an aeroplane, as they called them in those days, and flew from New York City to Los Angeles. And Brecht was in fact staying in Santa Monica. And he went to see him. And in 1942, it was um, hardly anybody, I mean, maybe 10 people in America, maybe 20 people, knew what was going on in Europe. And no one else knew. So then, in a way, Kurt Weill and Lotte Lenya must have felt rather lonely. It must have been rather wonderful to see Brecht again, because my God, if anybody, if two people knew what was going on in Europe and America, it was Brecht and Weil. And they knew what the Battle of Stalingrad was about, and they knew what it meant, and they just knew. And so, they did something extraordinary. They wrote this song just to mark it, really to say, so that I can be here now and tell you what this was. And it's in fact the most compassionate song against war I've ever heard. <laughs> 